So today we're going to talk about something that I'm seeing happening quite a bit at the moment and there's a massive mistake about dividend stocks that's happening. I'm seeing a few people do this error or mistake and today I thought, you know what, it'd be really good to talk about this. And I got this idea actually from yesterday's video. There was a comment and the comment really gave me the idea um, about these dividend stocks and I won't show that comment in the video just because I don't know if that person would want to be on uh, th this video. Um, but it was it's not really me saying like, oh, they're making a massive mistake. It's just something to be careful of. And a few people I've, I, I feel aren't being cautious, cautious about what's happening uh, around some of these dividend stocks. So um, yeah, thought I'd share this with you guys. Hopefully saves a few of you from making this mistake uh, and we'll take a look at what's going on. Now, before we get stuck onto the video, I just want to shout out Greg's absolutely on fire this morning. Came out with some earnings or trading update and the numbers were absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you guys want to see a video on this one. Obviously, it's one that I own for uh, nearly two and a half years now. A little bit gutted because I was going to buy a little bit more if it could go a little bit lower. But uh, no, boom, it's gone uh, It's gone up. And um, yeah, I mean, it was a good day yesterday and pre-market looks pretty strong today anyway. But getting on to today's video, talking about this dividend mistake that a lot of people are making. So a lot of this is kind of based around Persimmon. And I'm seeing Persimmon mentioned a lot in the comments. And this is the one that I want to be first, firstly pointing out. So Persimmon at the moment looks like a fantastic opportunity. Obviously a house builder, um, trading at five times earnings, pays a 17% dividend yield, nearly 18% dividend yield, wow. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna talk about this dividend yield to start off with. Now, at the moment, a lot of people are seeing that 18% dividend yield, they're going, you know, imagine that I just buy a stock and then they get 18% dividend yield off it. Unbelievable opportunity, something I need to be buying. Now, this is what we need to be really careful of because obviously when you compare it to Taylor Wimpy, uh, that's a 9%, it looks absolutely amazing. You know, Red Rose, 7% looks amazing. One that I own, Barrett Developments, uh, 10%. Obviously, they're still really fantastic dividend yields. And uh, But then when you look at Persimmon, you know, you talk about 17% dividend yield. Now, Persimmon have historically paid a lot more out to shareholders through dividends. But what a lot of people aren't appreciating here is the sustainability of these yields. It looks absolutely amazing. But... What a lot of people aren't doing is digging into them dividends and seeing how sustainable them yields are for like an 18% dividend yield. An example of this is Persimmon. So when you look at their dividend payments history, you'll see that they've really been hiking that dividend up with interims, dividends, special dividends, and how sustainable are they going to be to carry on paying out these dividends? Because these dividends are very high payments that have increased. And especially when you look at someone like a Persimmon, for example, what you're going to have at the moment, and this is what analysts are forecasting, is if we go on their future growth, you can see that they're going to go from 787 million in profit, and that's going to go down to um, 677 million profit forecast at the moment. So there's going to be a massive decline in profit. And someone like a Persimmon at the moment has come off a fantastic year good amounts of growth, house markets, housing markets being on fire. But as well as that, when you look at the payout of this dividend, they're currently paying out 102% of their profit. So at the moment, basically every bit of profit that comes in from Persimmon then gets paid out as a dividend to shareholders. Now, obviously, if your profits are going to dip, that's going to have a problem because then when how are you going to pay that dividend? Otherwise, if you're going to carry on paying it, you know, you're going to have to either take on debt or go through your cash or reduce the dividend. And then if you're reducing the dividend, then it's not as good opportunity as what it looks. And obviously as well, you've got to consider that the housing market at the moment, we don't know how much of a slowdown it's gonna have. You know, we look through the data there, analysts are clearly expecting a slowdown in profit. We don't know how that's gonna be because the housing market could have a, a massive collapse at the moment and how sustainable that's gonna be. So it's really important to look into them yields and think, well, persimmon here, have been hiking up the dividend, but how sustainable is that going to be? Because you look here, the profit's going to dip, they're paying out more than what they can afford on the profit point of view, is that going to stay around 17%? And that's what the video is about, is just you've got to be really digging into these numbers right now and not get sucked in and think, oh, okay, now it's a 17% dividend yield, I need to be buying it. Look, don't just take Google here and go, that's the numbers. You need to be looking at the numbers and working them out for yourself and how future-proof that's going to be. So someone like me who's in Barrett, Barrett Developments that pays a 10% dividend yield, I'm looking at that and thinking, they're not in a position like Persimmon, obviously they pay around 73% at the moment, but still sustainability, I could see Barrett Developments, especially if the housing market has a slowdown, 
I'm expecting to see that dividend potentially drop to six or seven percent, which I still think is absolutely amazing, especially down at this sort of valuation. But that's just something that I'm kind of factoring here, and that's what's you know really important to do. And another example is BM. So I was just kind of um one of my days that I was just kind of walking around going to do a few jobs. Went into B&M and uh, I went into B&M and I was like, wow, it's actually still amazing, you know, busy in here. And at the same time, I was thinking about the share price. This is what ends up happening most of the time. I end up walking around and everything somehow goes back to the stock market in my head. Um, but I was thinking, I know that share price has massively dipped off and the, stock, the, the business is on fire. The stores are still really busy. I just have a quick look and I thought seven times earnings. I worked out what the forward P would be, which is obviously really important to do because a lot of businesses have had, had an explosion of profit and revenue. And even then it was like a, an eight or a nine. I thought that's not bad at all. And then I looked at the dividend yield and I was like 5% dividend yield. I was like, that's actually pretty attractive. But then when I looked at the sustainability of what this dividend was going to be, I noticed going through the, the history, you could see that they had you know massively hiked up that final dividend from 5P up to you know 15p and i could see they were paying a massive uh, a special dividend and um, which they paid in 2021 which was 20p but then to 2025p so i could see here that same again b&m has had a very good few years financially that i don't know if it's as sustainable to do it and obviously margins are going to be hit and then they're also hiking up a massive dividend I don't think this dividend is sustainable. So when I then looked back at B&M, I was like, okay, the valuation's okay and the dividend looks good, but I don't think that can carry on at a 5% yield. It's probably gonna have to cut that dividend. So I'm really gonna get B&M at like a three or 4% dividend yield. So then is that worth it? And that's just something else that I'm factoring in that you've got to be looking at and think, don't just take, oh, Google says it's 5%. You've got to be working out how sustainable leads are when we have a, an economy that's not gonna be in as good of a place. And it also works on another point of view. So I wanna show this one on Royal Mail. So Royal Mail says it's an 8% dividend yield. And you see here the P ratio is down at a three and you're thinking a three, wow, that's absolutely amazing. But when you do start looking at the financials, you'll see here, let's actually go on the past performance. You can see here that historically, Royal Mail's kind of sat around the profit of two, 200 million, 300 million, um, even 175 million there, even dipping into the 22 million in the CV times. So that's what Royal Mail has historically done. But what Royal Mail's had and what a lot of businesses had is this big jump up in the amount of profit. They had obviously the one year where e-commerce went absolutely amazing. They then walked away with 876 million in profit. However, when you look at the future growth, you can see this is gonna go, you know, backtrack to uh, what they've historically done, which you can see here is 93 million, or analysts are actually expecting in 2024, 366, 4 million. So you can see here the profit here is not sustainable. It's going to have a massive drop off. So then when you look at Royal Mail and you go, well, Google says it's actually a three, ta three times earnings. Well, within a few months time when the financials catch up and it's this one time boom has gone out of its way, it's actually not looking that cheap at three times earnings. It's going to be you know a lot higher than that. And that's why it's really important for you to look at these numbers, question them. Are they correct? Are they going to be correct in future uh, periods of time because that's where you want to be looking as an investor you want to be looking at the future and what that dividend is going to be in the future and also what the valuation is going to be in the future and you've also got to be careful of this i actually saw this on twitter the other day and uh, this guy called howard beckett was posting about royal mail pockets two million profits every single day it was talking about the uh, strike that's going on with royal mail now i'm not going to get too involved into politics and all that i've done my my uh, one video of being a bit more political than what I normally am. But this shows you, you know, this guy here, Howard Beckett is using incorrect information to, you know, support an agenda here. You know, historically Royal Mail has done 200 million profit. Sure, it had that kind of one, one off kind of year where it had a massive boom. But right now, you know, that profit's gonna be massively down. And you can see here clearly he took the peak of the earnings divided by, you know, 365 days a year and obviously came out with two, two million a year. But realistically, that's not sustainable. You know, right now, Royal Mail pockets profit of two million uh, every single day. That's not true. Right now, you could see here that Royal Mail is not making two million a day. It did at one point for a year, but that's only a year. Previously, it's never made two million profit a day. Right now, right now, it's not making two million profit a day. It just had a one good off year. And you can see this here guy, this guy here, Howard, is using that to his advantage to support an agenda, which is false information that he's using. And this is why you've also got to question the numbers. You've also got to question other people's opinions as well, because they might not be using correct numbers. You can see here, he says they're making two million profit a day. Right now, Royal Mail isn't. And that's why you've also got to look at 
the numbers for yourself and make your own opinions and not look at other people's opinions and think is that actually you know that's all oh, that's definitely going to be a true statement they're saying and the last one i'm going to leave you on here is actually one that i own which is hollywood ball and this is once again like showing that sometimes you have to do your own numbers because they could be incorrect and sometimes like google for example has the incorrect numbers on uh, their site. So you see here, Hollywood Ball, one that I own, uh, pays a 1.5% dividend yield. So you look at that one going, ah, that's you know, it's an okay dividend really. It's, you know, you're know, probably not gonna be invested in this one for a dividend. However, when you look at this here, this is actually, once again, incorrect numbers. When we look at the actual dividend, it's actually gonna be somewhere around a 4.1%. Now, the reason why Google is very slow at updating is because at the moment, Google is only picking up that Hollywood Ball has paid its interim dividend. It's actually not paid since the CV times yet, it's final dividend, which will come at around December time. So when Hollywood Ball actually goes to pay its interim and then pays its final dividend, we'll see Hollywood Ball actually hold up uh, around about a 4% dividend yield. So same again, this is why you need to check the information, look at the future dividends, and then you start looking at Hollywood Ball and you think, okay, it's an eight times earnings, and then it's gonna be a you know 4% dividend yield that's actually uh, not too bad at all. And that kind of you know massively changes the picture on what you might invest in. So yeah, this video is just today talking about making sure dividend yields are sustainable, making sure the profits are historically at the right amount or what they're gonna be in the future. And also you know double checking people's opinions and making sure the numbers are correct as well on some sites and that's by doing your own uh, information uh, or research should I say um, so yeah hope you enjoyed the video anyway guys if you do want to start investing now is obviously a really good time if you do want to start using trading 212 which is what I use there's a link in the description join through there you get a free share worth up to a hundred pound but thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video